So what is the best home studio monitor setup for video editing? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my studio monitor, subwoofer, audio interface, as well as cables and tips for setting everything up right now. Hey, what's up guys? Sean here with Think Media TV, helping you go further, faster in media. And on this channel, we do tech gear reviews, video gear reviews, as well as audio videos, just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any point during this video, check out show notes and links in the description below. I'll list out all of the gear that I mentioned, as well as any other resources or things I forgot. Let's jump into the video. So I've actually gotten quite a few questions from the Think Media community. You've seen these studio monitors in the background. You've been curious, what is the total setup of everything that you're using for audio? And as I go into this setup, there's kind of two disclaimers. Number one is that this is kind of overkill for video editing. I think it's appropriate, depending on what level of video editing you're using. But you know, for the average person, editing on just a really good pair of studio, not even an expensive pair, but just a solid pair of headphones is a great way to edit video. However, I did find when I invested in, in this setup, which is approximately about $1,000 when you add everything together, I was really doing videos where I wanted to hear what the bass was, because it'd be playing you know, in front of 1,000 people, and it'd be playing on screens, and depending on where content was, maybe it is appropriate. The second thing is that I actually uh, don't talk uh, about it a lot here on this channel, but I actually really am a huge, uh, I'm obsessed with music. And so it's kind of a personal hobby. I'm kind of always getting into music. And so there's that benefit of listening to, you know, having great speakers and, and having a setup that goes far beyond your typical setup as it, when it comes to audio. Okay, so let's jump into the actual checklist of the setup. The first thing is these studio monitors are some K ARK Rocket 6CLs. And I believe that's CL, I'm not sure what it stands for, but you'll probably notice if you've seen KRK studio monitors before, they're typically yellow. And so this was like a limited edition version that came out. You can still dig around and find these used on like eBay and whatnot. They're actually pretty old. Currently, if you wanted like the same setup, and they sound amazing, um, the KRK Generation 3 Rocket 6s are pretty much available everywhere. And those are about $150 a piece. So just to start, you get two powered studio monitors and you're at you know about $300, uh, but those are a great, great starting point. The second thing that you'll notice is actually some RLX Acoustics Mopads. And those are the foam that go under the speakers. Now, I got these on Black Friday or Cyber Monday a couple years ago, and the initial thing for them, some people say they, they're kind of overhyped, they don't do much, they're just like expensive foam. You know, a lot of audio engineers stand by them. And I think the first thing though that's nice about them is they allow you to adjust the positioning of your monitors really well. You can give them, in this case, you can give them an angle, you can raise them up a little bit higher. So if you need a few inches of adjustment as far as where your monitors are, those are great. But I also noticed that they um, really improved the clarity and one huge thing that they can improve is vibration. Sometimes studio monitors, if they're sitting on a desk at certain volumes, you're gonna get vibration which is gonna affect your sound. And so those pads completely remove that. The third element of this setup is a KRK 10S subwoofer. And so that goes under the table and that is insane. Um, if you love bass, it is, it's got plenty of bass, more than I usually ever use. When I lived in an apartment um, in California, we couldn't even really turn it on. Like it was just too loud and it would kind of shake the whole room. Um, at this point, I probably run it at about 25% and it is a huge thing. Now, I just recently had someone over um, who was listening to this setup and they were like, well, I haven't even been hearing a whole you know, range of sound in all of my songs, which is true. One huge thing about a sub is you are, and in general studio monitors, you're missing out on those low frequencies. And so what I found was that sometimes if we were doing big promo um, trailers, um, back when I was uh, working at a church, we would do a lot of like conference promos and different things. If I was editing that content, that subwoofer would let me know what a room with good, with you know, full range of sound, including subs, 
what content would sound like. So in that case, it is extremely practical if you're making, if you're doing films or you're mixing where like sound matters and you need that full spectrum. And then other than that though, it's just super cool for uh, music naturally as well. The fourth element of this setup is something I recently upgraded and that is an uh, Audient ID14 audio interface. Now, this was like a game changer for this entire setup. And the reason was, was my prior setup was an Ederol audio interface that I think I bought used off eBay. I bought it like six years ago and it was probably like 25 years old at the time. Like, uh, and you know, it was all right, but there was just so many things about it where you could tell it kind of it had static when you were doing the volume control and some other, you know, practical things like that. So I did a lot of research and I have to say, again, a lot of other people's opinions, especially like sound engineer techs and different people I listened to, they said like, this is by far the best audio interface for the price point. Now it comes in at about $300, um, but I picked this up uh, during Black Friday for a discount off of that. And the main thing that I got it for was actually, I don't do a ton of instrumentation or vocal recording through the preamps. However, occasionally I do, and especially if I collab with somebody. So having that feature, uh, feature is nice. But what I actually ultimately wanted was just a uh, really clear sound and I immediately noticed the clarity, you know, low noise. Um, as well as more gain and just an overall sleek performance and design. And then um, great software that comes with it, like the, the included software, super nice, super intuitive. And then just more flexibility for um, switching between the studio monitors and headphones. And so actually my workflow on this guy was not only was the headphone output, output not very good, but also I would have to literally um, turn off all the studio monitors. I would power down the sub if I only wanted to listen to headphones. And that actually is not the greatest thing for you. You know, it always makes that pop noise when you power down you know, your speakers. Not the greatest thing to be doing. So the, in the case of the ID14, you can actually select uh, your studio monitors, completely adjust the gain, all the, you know, up or down. You can zero that out, switch to headphones, and just do the headphones. And the other thing that I was wanted is I actually wanted like legit power in that headphone jack. I've been doing a lot of research in um, headphone amplifiers, as well as DACs, digital to analog converters. More to come on future videos if it, you just felt like I was speaking gibberish just then. Um, but basically, if you have a good pair of headphones, um, the headphone power that you're getting out of a headphone jack matters. And this was horrendous, like it was terrible. And so I, um, every headphone that I tested on this immediately was boosted in clarity, you know, the imaging, the sound. And so that's something to consider. Your system is only as strong as the weakest link, right? And so I'm super pleased overall with this audio interface. It gives me a lot of functionality for future things. And that kind of took up the whole level of this setup uh, across the board. The fifth piece of this setup is a Furman PL8C power conditioner. Now, this is kind of optional depending on, you know, if you're setting up a home studio or something for video editing, if you want to replicate this setup, you might not need it immediately, but I actually got this when I was living in Seattle. What happened was I got the studio monitors and they had some noise to them, right? They were plugged into just the wall or to an extension uh, to like a power strip. And there was like some general hissing and some general noise. And so I believe I was at Guitar Center and they're like, yeah, a power conditioner will probably clean that out because your wall power, depending on where you are, is not necessarily clean. There could be some interference or whatever. And so that power conditioner becomes, you know, a middleman between you and your uh, your power, as well as something that bands and different, you know, people travel with audio engineers when they're on the road. So they can always have clean sound regardless of what, you know, how clean the power is. It also um, removes noise in general, and it also gives you surge and spike protection. So a lot of my computer uh, parts behind me here plug into the back of that power conditioner because I feel like that's their best protection as well. And so those guys can be pretty expensive. And at the time though, I realized it was a pretty critical piece because again, it completely cleaned up all the noise coming out of those studio monitors, and um, which is a big deal. 
And then the sixth element is the cabling that hooks everything together. And so the uh, audio interface is plugged in via USB to the computer. I actually, it's running off USB power right now, but it also has a separate power supply. I believe that helps with phantom power should you need to plug that in if you do want to power some instruments or some things off of it. And then um, the speakers actually plug into the subwoofer with two uh, quarter inch TRS patch cables. And so they go from the monitors to the sub and, and then the sub is XLR to TRS back into the audio interface. And so, uh, and across the board, all of those cables are balanced. So again, if you wanted to reproduce this setup, the, these studio monitors also have RCA plugins, which is like your typical, like, you know, red and white, left and right cables. But really those are unbalanced cables. Balance cables add a, an XLR as a balance cable because you get three prongs. You get left and right audio plus the third prong is grounding. Or on a TRS cables, uh, I believe they stand for tip ring sleeve. You get both audio channels and a grounding channel. And really the point, uh, the audio engineers and sound techs go a lot deeper into this. But your balance cables, again, are cleaner because they have that ground. They're cleaning out any kind of noise that's in the system. And as I said, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And so when you put something like this together, you really don't want to cheap out on any particular component because, I mean, if you've already invested in great speakers, but you have, you know, bad power coming out of uh, the wall and that's not, you know, protected or cleaned up in any way, or you have horrible speaker cables on higher end equipment. And so when I wrap all of that together, I just have to say, I mean, it's one of these things where there's like never a day where I come in here and I'm like not grateful for every second of sound that comes out of the setup. And it is definitely an investment. As I said, when you add it all together, it adds up. But a lot of the stuff I've been using for years now, I mean, probably almost six years and not don't, you don't really need to upgrade. And so there is something if you're thinking about investing in a home studio, maybe not just for video editing, but also for mixing, however you found this video, you know, I think that it, it, when you invest in quality, you really never regret it. Two questions of the day. Number one, what are your tips when it comes to getting great audio for creating content? Let me know in the comment section below. And what are you currently using? What's your current audio setup? What headphones? Do you have studio monitors? What kind of speakers? Let me know in the comment section. Remember that some of the best tips and feedback come from you, the Think Media TV community. So definitely connect with everybody in the comment section. So thanks so much for checking out this video. Definitely subscribe for more videos just like this. And if you haven't downloaded the Think Media TV Video Gear Buyer's Guide, it's actually a guide that goes through a complete list of all of the top cameras, lighting, tripods for really creating you know, videos online. So you can grab that for free. Link in the description below as well as on the YouTube card. Until next time, Think Media TV is helping you go further, faster in media. Keep crushing it and we will talk soon. Audio and yeah. all right, as well as some tips for setting it all up. Coming up.